I'd like to talk about the collision that we're witnessing of the worlds of television and the social web as increasing numbers of people are uh, talking online through social media about what they're watching on TV, and they're doing it in real time. Uh, so it's a kind of in-context audience feedback loop that is emerging, and it's really uh, just over the last year that we're seeing a kind of explosive growth of this phenomena. People are uh, tweeting uh, simple messages as a kind of synchronizing behavior of what they're watching on TV, affecting what other people are tuning into. They're making comments about content, whether it's a show at late night, something a little more substantial as uh, the um, presidential debates uh, start to play out. Uh, less frequent, but also um, sort of consistently, we see people becoming sort of ad repeaters as they watch commercials on TV or making critiques of decisions uh, in those same commercials. And as we plot the growth of this uh, new audience habit, uh, these are numbers for examples of three season premieres that we analyzed looking at last year's uh, season premiere of each of these shows versus this year. The number of unique people who have talked about these shows, we're seeing triple digit growth, whether it's in reality TV, or comedies, note the Ashton Kutcher effect in the, uh, the first one there. Uh, we see this in dramas. So across a variety of genres of television, there is this uh, kind of hockey stick-like phenomena that we are tracking. And the idea is simple. Television content is driving conversations on the social web. And the um, kind of closing the loop, all of this conversation activity on the social web is affecting what people are deciding to tune into and, more subtly, how they're interpreting what they're seeing, whether it's the programming or the advertising. So we've been spending a lot of time at Bluefin Labs working with the television industry, looking at the, the offline world. And, and here's a way that we started thinking about what's happening. You have a piece of TV content, and it radiates through television networks, and it makes some number of, of impressions on audience members. And what's been true since the, the onset of the broadcast industry is that people talk about moving experiences. And so impressions translate into social expressions. This has always been true. People talk about what they watch on TV, on the couch, the water cooler. What's changed is that people are now creating their own networks, social networks, through which these expressions are radiating. And for the first time in the history, certainly of television, it's possible at scale to do cause-effect analysis and link impressions to expressions. And that's exactly what Bluefin Labs set out to do. So here's a visualization of 50,000 people uh, out of our, our database of now well over 20 million who are, first of all, uh, active in social media. So we have the social graph uh, available from public sources. And then Bluefin Labs operates satellite dishes and essentially strip mines the content of live TV building up this network of nodes. Each node here is either a show or a 30-second or 15-second commercial. And you'll note that there's a very dense set of links between content on television that we are automatically building up. These are connections between the semantic content of shows and ads and also programming uh, connections. When, things, when an ad airs on a specific show, we track all of that. So we have two graphs, the public available social graph on the top and the content graph of television, which, as far as we know, is now the most comprehensive uh, semantic index available of TV. And we take then the crucial last step, which is automatically inferring a kind of connective tissue between these two graphs. And we're doing this by analyzing billions of comments, tweets, public Facebook comments, the blogosphere, and looking, at, looking for people who say the right things at the right time. If they make mention of a show name, a cast character, uh, a, a play in a football game, since we know what's on TV, algorithmically, we can make the connections. We, we have a name for this uh, super graph. We call it the TV genome. And to give you a sense of the scale, today in the US, we're listening to 20 million people who are purposefully, publicly expressing what they think about TV. And every month, through our live feeds, we're adding to our database 200,000 uh, telecasts of shows and about 2 million US national ads. So all of this is being indexed. 
and the link structure in between, we're adding about 40 million links per month. So one view of this data is to look at television networks versus time. So we have time along the horizontal. And we can build out a, a kind of bar chart, which show by show is capturing the number of expressions, social expressions, linked to every live show. So each of those little bars is one show, like an episode of Glee would show up as a very high bar. Uh, extreme couponing, a uh, show many of you have never heard of, but people actually talk about, would have a much smaller number of expressions. And so over uh, the sort of entire TV landscape, you know, we're now looking at 215 networks 24-7 and building up essentially the complement to what a Nielsen would do in the US counting impressions, we're looking at expressions. But when we zero in and look at any particular show, there's actually much more here than just a number that's counting the number of expressions. We can drill down, and underlying this data are actual verbatims of what people are saying in the flow of experiencing the media. So here are uh, sort of the snapshot of over 100,000 comments driven from a live, uh, the, the second presidential uh, Republican debate. And the tag cloud made up of people's in-context context, uh, responses is a very different kind of data than what you'd get from a focus group, because these are people uh, in their natural context talking as they're taking in the media. So this is a kind of uh, new window into audience mindset, which for programmers and for advertisers, uh, we, we believe will be a game changer. One can go further and automatically analyze sentiment. This is just showing an example. Compare the audience mindset of Wipeout versus Criminal Minds. One very amused and vulgar, another far more polite and serious. As we build out these dimensions of emotional response, these are data-driven views of audience mindset that marketers, for example, can decide where, where they want their brand to live uh, and where they don't want to. Uh, another example of how to start slicing the TV genome, uh, and as you'll, you'll see, uh, as we launch the company, we've been spending a lot of time looking at marketing implications. This is a genre wheel where we can look up any show on TV. So here's one of my favorite examples, uh, a show that I watched, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. And as we trace these lines emanating from this particular probe in, in this visualization, this is a widget from a, uh, a marketing dashboard that Bluefin has created. You can go and interactively explore the different shows which have high affinity with The Daily Show. So shows such as uh, uh, Meet the Press and Colbert Report uh, are shows where the same audience who watches and talks about The Daily Show are watching and talking with statistically high uh, um, uh, rates with, with the other shows on TV. So here's a BBC America show that you may not have realized has a high overlap audience. If you want to promote The Daily Show, and generate word of mouth online, we know of no better way to, to decide where, where that promotion should run. Um, just giving you a bit more sense of, you know, from a, a, a sort of targeting and uh, sort of understanding of audience point of view, here is a, a new way to index television. These are the top seven, or seven shows out of hundreds that parents are most likely to be watching and talking about. And as we sort of re-slice this data and look from the point of view of hardcore gamers, the top uh, the top shows change. If you now switch and look at from a point of view a specific brand, people who talk about Diet Coke publicly, uh, you get a, a completely different view again. So we do see a, a real change coming in how television advertisers essentially that have been for decades creating messages and uh, planning and buying media around essentially very, real, very little understanding of the audience now social media impact can be used to dynamically adjust planning and buying uh, can, and can be used to change the, the message uh, that is being put out in the first place. And the last thing uh, that we are now looking at and we think will be a really exciting uh, direction for 2012 is to look at how the live ability to know what is happening offline in television and how ad campaigns are intersecting with social media, the social media graph online can be tied together to create cross-channel campaigns. So rather than siloing the offline and the online parts of a communication strategy, and this applies more broadly than advertising, how these two can be combined uh, to create a whole new form of communication that seamlessly goes across uh, the, the online and offline world. And with everything from the elections 
to the Olympics coming up in 2012, we really think this is the year that social TV is going to arise uh, as a completely new uh, form of media and a new, uh, new experience both for the audience and from the business point of view. Thank you. Oh. Hey, Jeb, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks very much.